Don't be intimidated, Squidward. Try to imagine him in his underwear. Oh no, he's hot! Harrison here, back to help you figure out if these fantastic banners are for fantastic you. There'll be a number of criteria to evaluate the units and ARs, and you can find an extended explanation for these in the first two videos in the series I made. So check those out first if you want a solid idea of my approach here. Now then, uh, let's take a closer look at the reprint banners first. Starting with the updated Fantastic Boyfriend's Collaboration 1 Transient Summon. I'm not a big fan of this unit. A lot of people say he's good for this and that and doing damage and being tank and yada yada yada. It's not my cup of tea. His personal damage is not as reliable as I'd like, so he's a common card I only use if I was held at gunpoint. Or if he's a boost for an event out right now and I don't have any better choices. <clears throat> He's exceptional as a self-healing tank that doesn't need to move, but his damage mitigation only lasts a handful of turns from the start of battle. Which isn't great, as tanks are supposed to last a bunch of turns, because otherwise you just use a damage dealer to clear as fast as possible. Yeah, I don't get truck duration tanks. Anyway, he's alright, but he doesn't have a dragon ult for his 5 star, so in the bargain mini go. You know what kits I dislike the most? Damage dealers with unreliability. The sad state of affairs right now is that Orgus is still one of the better damage dealers of long slash variety in the game. He's also a switch. No, I won't be making fun of that because I think it's a dumb word for that other meaning. But getting back on track, if you move him, he stops attacking and starts defending. He can tank if you boost his activation rate and get some extra healing in there. But you can also just use one of the many other tanking setups with lower maintenance and higher payoff. You can forget about him until you need some long slash damage again. Then, when you're forced to, you can pick him up again and be reminded of how disappointing he is. You know what, kids? I dislike the second most. Thanks with short longevity. Like you are, Gander, Soul functions as a unit who can mitigate damage for a few turns from the start of battles. Honestly, just forget about that part even though that's clearly what he was primarily designed for. If I may instead bring your attention to his defense pierce, and then Soul actually might be justified in existing. He's one of the few units who can deal with defense stacks so reliably at a good range. And as a result, he's held his ground in both Chapter 13 and Taxi Farming and in various challenges. Get him or don't get him, it's up to you. There are other defense pierces you can use instead. But he's still good to have around. You like debuffs? Necros has a bunch of high impact debuffs with rates that range from. Eh, to. Hey, that's pretty good. His healing is also fairly meaty, if he somehow misses with his large snipe range. If he can somehow get his charge up, which by the way he has no native way of doing so, but if he can build it up anyway, his board wipe packs some pretty disgusting damage. For his most relevant usage in today's environment, he makes a decent calm clear, but otherwise shits out multiple debuffs he can exploit with units like Jurong or Tangaroa Mugen in challenges. Not game changing, but he's more interesting than Jormungandr. Lightning round! Are the ARs bopping or are they balding? For good measure, I'll also go over the welfare ARs. Three, two, one, start! Maybe next time. Ah! Don't we already have a better option? At least he's cute. Nice job! Excellent! C -c -c clear We now return back to our regular programming, brought to you by the Fantastic Boyfriend's Collaboration 2 Transient Summon. Another long slash unit, another disappointment! See, my problem isn't what he does, but what his entire class should do, but instead falls oh so short. You know why we love tall maps, Life Wonders? Because you can hit every square with three shot magic or snipe damage dealers, no matter how the enemy is positioned. You know why we hate wide maps? Because you can't hit every square with just slash or long slash damage dealers! Gordon could have been a bridge to farming with those units, with his board wide enemy pull happening every turn, in cases of wide maps with only one enemy per column. But yet again, you robbed long slash their relevance at farming because you didn't give them enough movement. You restricted the range of their effects so that they could never affect every column on turn 1, and inexplicably you also refused to give Gordon a single guaranteeable damage amp. 
This entire weapon class is a joke. There will never be a case you'll want to use this unit over a consistent board wiper. The rest of this kit doesn't matter, just use Oscar or Oz. Bye. Like Orgus and Gordon, Beowulf and Worm belongs to a very limited category of damage dealers in the Long Slash class. Well, he's not really Long Slash, he changes into it, but you get the idea. Unlike Orgus and Gordon, he's not complete ass and reliably, having all his important amps guaranteed out of the box. He can even deal further pronounced Long Slash damage on his quick to build charge, potentially dealing boss killing damage. Pretty amazing, right? Huh? Huh? Did I manage to really into thinking he's a great unit? I'll just let you know now that, even if his damage is impressive, being a damage dealer without farther range always hurts. He'll never be able to hit the backliners. You can clear any tall map using only calm clears, but you can't clear any wide map using only long slash units. He'll be handy for any generous map formation that doesn't have backliners. Or if you oz him up. Well, it's a real bummer you won't find much other use. Hey, wow! Another tank that doesn't need to move. That's pretty good, right? Mm -hmm. You're telling me Klaus does other stuff besides tanking? Sir, you must be mistaken. See how he can mitigate damage and debuffs while healing in a respectable range. But he can hit everyone at under half health, you say? Okay, and? What does he do then? Provide the most common damage up in the game at an abysmal rate? Mitigate damage as if he wasn't already doing that at full health? Resisting getting one shot so he can continue providing these mid effects? Yeah. Just focus on the decent tanking part when he's over half health. Turn off your brain, nothing else matters. Now we're talking. Here we have an unholy combination of buff ownership effects. The buff copying of Eye Gear, the buff refresh of Krampus, and the buff sharing of Sandayu. With these three in a single unit, Fafnir is able to copy and maintain any and all buffs lasting two turns or more, and can share all these buffs too as long as he gets his charge up. He deletes mobs with his own native damage, and with the right partners can maintain boss killing damage across the entire team for as long as you want. This all makes him fairly suitable for farming, but he's more attuned to challenges where the enemy south can start scaling past a million, which he can easily handle. I talked a lot about damage here, but Fafnir can maintain a bunch of healing defense buffs too, making your team unkillable. Possibly the strongest new unit this year, but only for those who are willing to team build for it. And the moment of truth! Should he chase, or should he save? As usual for the AR summon, but if you want the drop boost for this event, but otherwise, keep in mind you'll never use these gacha ARs like you wouldn't use any other. Throw in some AR tickets if you will, and that stones, otherwise big skip. Though, the new Welfare AR featuring Necros and Bacchus packs quite a punch, so get all the dupes in the item exchange for sure. For the transient summons, I'd skip the first one unless you're really looking for an option for defense piercing. Soul is still one of the better options, even if we do have alternatives now. For the new transient summon, no one is near a must-have. But if you enjoy building OP teams for challenges and can use an extra column clear for farming, Daphne's got your card. On a final note, maybe you'll want to skip all these banners entirely to save up. On the coming anniversary, where all the banners from the past year should be rerunning. Up to you, I don't know, take care everyone. <laughs>